you've seen a lot of successful people, you've experienced success, but you're still wondering what success really is. Hi, I'm Peter Foleschini, and today I want to talk to you about definition of success. I've prepared a small podcast that hopefully does not get too long, where I will share with you definition of success. And I want to emphasize right in the beginning that there are many different definitions of success and they vary according to your mission, your profession, your industry, and according to your archetype. What is your predominant archetype? Let's dive in into a society, societal induced vision of success. Our society right now in the Western hemisphere and in the whole Western world defines success as excess of money, more than you need it for security and opportunities, excess of housing, larger than you need it, and more than one if possible, excess of cars, bigger, faster, and more expensive than needed, excess of clothes and jewelry, more pieces and more expensive than absolutely necessary, excess of sexual partners, as many as possible, that is how success is defined today, excess of drugs and alcohol, as much as possible, as often as possible, excess of parties all the time if possible, and excess of traveling all the time, if possible. And of course, we wonder, is that really success? And then, in order to be successful, you need to have high goals. And these goals need to be societal induced. You need a big house, you need a big uh, car. And more often than not, these goals are just one large source of frustration. Only if your inner goals are aligned with your, your goals, they can be source of inspiration. And I would define success, and this is not my idea, I, I'm just sharing what, what definition of success I like more, is that Success is just an achievement that, or something that we achieve compared to the goal. If we wanted to have a house and we now have a house, we are 100% successful. If we wanted a house and we now have 50% of the house, we are 50% successful. If we have two houses instead of a house that was our goal, we are 200% successful. That is a it is. However, this is not the end of our podcast. In neuroscience, success is seen as, some, as a process that requires adrenaline to achieve, spark dopamine and, and oxytocin when achieved. That is important. So if you want to feel success, it, the goal needs to be as demanding that it starts um, that that it starts adrenaline production in your veins and and in, in in your body and adrenaline is an absolutely necessary part of success because it it takes effort to be successful and after this process is finished. So when you have achieved your goals, you should feel the, spar uh, the sparks of dopamine and oxytocin. When you achieve it, and only if you feel this dopamine, and if it's a long lasting, then it's, it's real success according to neuroscience. For men, success is strength, power, Freedom, that is what drives success or that is what means success and 
why uh, men are striving to be successful. And for women, it's more about security. It's not that it's not about strength, power, and freedom for women as well, but the most important is security. What I would like to stress is that societal induced goals will not bring you real success. The dopamine spike will not be long lasting and you will not get a dopamine spike when you look back at your achievements in the future. And you said, okay, I bought this house. And if it's societal induced, then it will not spark an immediate dopamine reaction or it will not mean security for you if you are a, a, a woman. And I've devised success according to Jungian archetypes. What I would like to say is that success is many different things for many different people. Jung has devised 12, let's say, basic archetypes or the most common archetypes. And for each of them, success is something uh, different. For example, if we start with the innocent, the most important is to go through life challenges without being corrupted and being able to preserve innocence. Their goal would be a house and a car that does not negatively affect the environment, that does not negatively that, that, does, that does not spark negative response from society so that their innocence is preserved. They don't want to be seen as corrupt. They don't want to be seen as something that had to do something bad in order to reach their goal. So success for the innocent is in preserving the innocence. Success for the orphan, for the archetype of orphan, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here, is big family and a large circle of friends. So the most important part of success is not a big house, a big car. It's just a big family that gathers regularly and a large circle of friends. Success for the archetype of the hero is victory in undoing the injustice for their self or for the people or animal they're protecting. They can also protect the environment. For example, heroes can fight against hydropower plants, against nuclear power plants, because they believe they're protecting environment. And that is success for them. It's not a big house. It's not a lot of money. Success for the caregiver is being able to protect and take care of others, others that are dear to caregiver. This is the most important for the caregiver. And they just want to take care and their dopamine spikes after the people or the animals that they are protecting and taking care of are being well. That is the most important part of success for them. The explorer defines success as the ability to explore something that nobody or not a lot of people have explored before. So that they are there first in their community, first in their circles of friends, so that they explore the either um, a scientific discipline, an industry, sport, or cooking, or the recipe when cooking, but they need to explore something that they are first in, or that they go through uh, things that were not discovered before, just in order to find something new about it, something exciting, something that they did not know uh, before. 
they also like to travel to a faraway land to just to explore how, how's life uh, there because they're explorer. That is the success for them, being able to explore. The rebel finds success in being able to disrupt a process or a whole industry, start a revolution, or be part of the revolution. And the most important is that they understand their success as ability to stand against the establishment, against the authority. For the lover, Success is defined as being physically and emotionally attractive to, uh, to, to, to be able to attract desired intimacy and connection. Usually that, that results or success is divine, uh, defined as having a perfect spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. For creator, the most important in success is that they create enduring value, something that will have value after they're gone. For them, success is to publish a book, videos, different, uh, have different speeches, different posts, um, create a work of art, create new house, new, uh, new car, their creators, they, 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 they want to create something. And success is ability to create something that sparks their interest, that is hard to do and a lot of other people cannot do, but they are creative enough and resourceful enough to do it. Jester is is successful if he or she is able to play around, utilize a lot of humor, and the measure of success is if they are perceived as joy and fun to be around. The sage defines success as discovery and expose of truth that is in many possible areas. For example, for the sage, there would be a book published on ancient Rome with new facts that nobody knew before about the symbols that they were using and how they could heal themselves with a symbol. That is exactly the book that sage would uh, publish. And that is also the, the difference between creator and sage that sage have to have this special something uh, that it's and that it's this special something is exposed. That is how they define success. Magician is searching for success in win-win situation that help them or their tribe or their company or their society materialize certain vision. Vision that they believe is bigger uh, than themselves or that that uh, or bigger than their current circumstances. And we finish this archetypes with the last archetypes. Uh, sorry, the, the last of the archetypes is the archetype of the ruler. The ruler defines success as being able to exercise control and leadership in order to live in abundance and in controlled environment that will be safe for him and the people around him. And before I finish, let's dive into my definition of success and how it has changed with time. My dominant archetypes right now are explorer, creator, and magician. As explorer, I define success as 
discovery of new tools, ways, and methods of utilizing organ intelligence to help people feel well, to help them with their wellness regime, to help them improve their mental well-being. And this is just because I explore these tools and I am successful when the tools that uh, I have find and, uh, and tried to utilize prove to be successful in helping my clients make huge progress. As a creator, I define success as a published book, a published video like this one, a published post or an article. As a magician, I'm successful when I'm able to create a win-win situation or sometimes my clients call it miracle and this brings me success because my clients have with my uh, sorry have found success and way to success through my leadership and my guidance In these times, my definition of success is not big house, expensive cars, and exotic travels. It used to be before because my goals and my definition of our understanding of, of success was completely societal induced. I did not care about my archetypes. I did not care about my individual goals, my inner values. So I applied societal induced goals and tried to be successful. Of course, you may imagine that most of the time, time I fail. According to Jung, success is the byproduct of individuation. That means that it's a byproduct of successfully walking the road of self-discovery. The success always starts with understanding our individual and predominant archetypes or in understanding our own selves, our inner values, our mission, and of course, the industry where we work at or when, where we want to work. As a coach, I would always say, before you plan your goals, check your inner values. Check if your goals are not just societal induced uh, vision of success that has nothing to do with you, your inner values or your archetype. I would say that only, only if you adopt the goals to your inner values, to your archetypes, you will be able to effortlessly achieve them and even surpass them. For success, you need a cheerleader and much more important than that, you need also accountability partner. I would suppose, or sorry, I would propose that you get a mentor or a coach to help you search for your inner values, your archetypes, your industry, and your success, your personal definition of success. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Leave as many comments as possible and I'll try to reply to all of them. And in the description below, you will get access to a free one hour chat with me regarding your goals and inner values. And of course, there will also be linked to my book and uh, other resources that are available on the internet for you. Thank you.